What do we have here? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a caterpillar. Now, I can see how this can be confusing as either a leaf or, hey, a gummy bear. This bright green caterpillar belongs to the family Saturnidae. Saturnidae is the family of moths that comprise the largest moths around the world. Now, this one belongs to the Luna moth. It is an arboreal species and that bright green color can help it blend in with its food source. That way, predators don't spot it right away. You ever seen a snake like that, Chris? No, not that small. I don't even know what kind of snake that is. It is mildly venomous. No. I swear to God. I take it upon myself to educate as many people as possible. Everybody in my surroundings, as I see stuff, I educate people. This is the Florida ringneck snake, and the ringneck snake is considered mildly venomous. However, there is no known side effects to humans, just in some instances, minor skin irritation. By setting a good example, handling these snakes and teaching people about these snakes can help us preserve these snakes through time. Now you heard him say he'd never seen a snake that small. But this is a big guy compared to the juvenile. In this case, I can say I've never seen a snake this small. This is a freshly hatched or newborn baby ringneck snake. I believe this is what the thumbnail will look like right here. Now this juvenile ringneck snake is actually pretty quick for its size. It disappears in the leaf litter like without even being noticed. Now a ringneck snake can be identified by that bright orange ring. Gosh, look at him move. Bright orange ring around his neck and a stunning bright orange underbelly. Now a lot of times bright colorations on snakes is to warn people of their toxicity. That is called aposematism. It's almost like a warning label that we put on chemicals. And yes, of course, not all brightly colored snakes are venomous. Take for instance the Scarlet King Snake. It mimics the coral snake almost perfectly. Obviously some differences, but it's enough to scare off some of its predators. I estimate this juvenile ringneck to be freshly hatched. Like this cute little tiny brown anole. Now this guy probably isn't freshly hatched, it's probably a few months old. And found a nice food source because it's growing rapidly. However, it is a non-native species, it is the brown anole. So, unfortunately, it's not good for our ecosystem. But, I could never find it within myself to take a life, so I let him go where he was. This is a beautiful beetle species, a bright green, emerald colored. It is a dung beetle, unfortunately. A buddy of mine wanted to show me this. I went ahead and enlightened him to tell him that, hey, this guy, you realize what this is, right? It is a beetle and it does roll up dung. In fact, the ancient Egyptians worship beetles similar to this. They worship the scarab beetle. They were considered to be the first beetles to use actual navigation by the stars. And what took humans thousands of years to perfect flight. This fly makes it look so effortlessly while its wings flap and it can almost levitate like a helicopter. My camera could hardly keep up with the wings movements, but I thought it was interesting to see something just levitate so effortlessly. I had to put this in here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is in the sawfly family. Now, one of my most popular videos is about Dystera crocata, the woodlouse spider. In fact, I've never seen an actual woodlouse spider. This is the closest thing I've ever seen. The only reason I don't think this is a true woodlouse spider is because I don't see those really large fangs in the front. Now, there was a huge controversy over the woodlouse spider and had many people scared to death because they said they were deadly. In fact, the woodlouse spider is pretty much harmless. I believe this to be the imperial moth, however it looks a little different. Now it can often be found around structures because of our bright fluorescent and LED lights. These moths are confused because they use moonlight to navigate. Unfortunately, many times they perish right there in front of buildings. But I did find a true imperial moth, this one right here. It was at the end of its life cycle. We also found this moth around a structure. Truly saddening, you can tell by the look on this guy's face. However, it was still fascinating to see. It's our responsibility to educate people about wildlife so they can... I like turtles. You got it. Like turtles. This is my six-year-old buddy right here. Now, he was helping me clean out their aquarium. Their aquarium's low right there, obviously, but we're still going through the process. Normally, they have a floating dock and lots of different plants and stuff in there for them to hang out around. I know what you're thinking. You could have possibly taken those beautiful photographs of that cardinal. Those came out of the Autobahn book for bird identification. Of course I took these photos. This bird was inside of a structure, inside of a shop. 
bird sanctuary in here or something? Birds will actually create nests inside of buildings because they're sheltered from the rain and a lot of times predators. Now, things have changed a lot in my day. Since I was a kid, these are my parents at Key West, the 90 miles to Cuba sign. This is the southernmost point in the United States. You can see that people were actually selling sponges on the side of the fence right there. My parents never ever even caught on to what that said, which is kind of funny. I think they were selling a little bit more than sponges. It was just an interesting photo I saw from way back in my time. Now Luna moths aren't the only thing that really come out at night. Look at these snails, they're like breeding and stuff. Also, at night, sea turtles come onto the beach to lay their eggs. Make sure you go back and watch my sea turtle video where I actually spotted and watched the whole process. Life comes in all shapes and sizes, from the smallest mushroom caps growing on the side of the bark of large trees, to this important thyrynx wasp that is pollinating this flower. I have no idea what kind of caterpillar this is, but it was a harder caterpillar, not a real soft spongy one like we showed before. But even harder exoskeleton than that is this odd beetle. Now, many animals have adapted to men, and obviously this hawk is peaked up on a roof. The pigeon horntail wasp with the largest stinger I've ever seen. Not like this guy, the metricus wasp, which in fact has one of the most painful stings I've ever encountered. This is the DK's brown snake, which is a native snake species throughout the eastern United States. This is what a mosasaur dinosaur tooth would look like. I actually gave that away in a previous video. And this is the bumblebee, which I've never received a proper sting from. But some of you may remember I got stung on the lip by one of these bad boys. And this is a, another mildly venomous small snake species known as the pine wood snake. This is the polka dotted wasp moth. It seems to be confused right now. Its host plant is the oleander species and this in fact is a podocarpus. Now it's not a wasp, it is a moth. It has aposematism, hopefully confusing any predators that would try to eat it. Look at how bright that emerald green, stunning, almost iridescent color is. Now that red tail is kind of used to deter predators. It does lay its larva on the oleander plant and it is not a harmful or stinging species. Be sure you subscribe and hopefully we'll see you again this Thursday. Y'all have a great rest of your day. You never know what kind of video I'm going to upload. I was just bored. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Hopefully we'll see you again Thursday. Y'all have a great day.